Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Natasha, welcome to my channel. This video is another update in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. I love watching Pan Those Eyeshadows content, so I do have a list of other people who are doing this project in the description box. I tried to link their playlist so you could just watch them all in one. If you look at the list and someone is missing, someone that you like watching, or if you yourself have a playlist on your channel of your Pan Those Eyeshadows project, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to add you to the list. And of course, I will have all the information for the creator of this project, Alexi. She stopped doing it for a couple years, but she's back and she's doing it again this year, which is really exciting. I feel really good about this update. I have two eyeshadows that I've hit pan on, so we're going to be bringing in two new ones. I really like the looks that I created this month with my pan those eyeshadows. And in general, this is the first month so far this year that I actually feel really good about the progress I've made. So let's just get started. It's pan those eyeshadows time, like always with a picture of the five eyeshadows that I was working on in the month of March. I always like to start with the eyeshadows that have the best progress. I know some people like to save the best for last and stuff like that, but really I just get too excited and I want to share it with you right away. So let's start with the two eyeshadows that I hit pan on. The first one is from the Natural Lust palette by Too Faced. And I was working on the shade Peacocking, which is a sparkly blue teal color. When you use this dry, it's not good at all. I don't think the formula is good dry, but if you use it wet, this shadow sings. <laughs> what am I saying? That's such a weird thing to say. This shadow looks really great when you wear it wet. You not only get the really metallic base of that light blue, but you also get the shimmers in it as well. It makes it look really multi-dimensional. I used this an additional six times to hit pan on it, and I do like this eyeshadow palette a lot, so I'm glad to have pulled two shades in here so far this year, and so I actually have some progress showing in this palette. The next one was an eyeshadow that I wasn't sure if I was going to hit pan on this month or if it would take another month. Just because these eyeshadows are very firmly pressed and take a long time to hit pan on. It's from the Too Faced Natural Nudes palette and I was working on the shade Warm Rose. I had hit pan on Coco in my project last year. It took a long time. I think it took almost 50 uses to hit pan. And the same with Warm Rose. That one took almost 50 uses to hit pan as well. I used this on the lower lash line. I used it in the crease. I even have a look where I have it pretty much all over my eye for a really nice warm smoky eye look. And I used this an additional 13 times to hit pan. I have been rolling in a lot of Too Faced eyeshadows in this project so far this year. And I, even though I am enjoying that because I do like my Too Faced eyeshadow palettes, I'm kind of hoping that my two shades that I roll in this month will switch it up a little bit and maybe be from some other brands or palettes that I don't reach for as often. The next three shades are ones that I rolled in last month, so they don't have nearly as much progress as the first two, but I am glad that I'm reaching for them a decent amount. The first one being Morgana, which I reached for nine times. This is from Cleona. It's a beautiful shimmery green shade. It was perfect for the month of March, and I am making a bit of a dip in here. This is a very soft formula, so I imagine it wouldn't be too hard to hit pan on this again. You do have to be careful. You don't want to use too stiff of a brush even if you're trying to pick up the product because it will kind of flake or chip away. I find that really rich shimmery shades like that tend to do that. And honestly, this is not one that you have to use wet in order to get full capacity pigment. You can use your finger, you can use a dry packing brush and still get a really beautiful result. So that's kind of good. It was very different in comparison to peacocking, which is drier. This is definitely a creamier formula and I really loved using it in March and I will love using it in April just as much. The next one is Dark Side, which is a shade from my Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. This is a really dark, cool toned gray shade and I was a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to find a way to incorporate this into looks, but I really liked using this on the lower lash line. It's not such a dark shade like a black matte eyeshadow would be, where it's really jarring. It just added a nice amount of depth to my lower lash line without taking over the look or making anything look overtly cool toned. You're not going to see a huge difference, even though I did reach for this seven times. The Urban Decay shadows are just more tightly packed. I think it's going to take longer than maybe some softer shadows to show a lot of progress, which is fine. Like I said, I have found ways that I like using it in several different types of looks. So even though it probably will stick around for a couple months at least, it's not a shadow that I'm upset about. And the very last one is a shade that I neglected just because I was focusing on Warm Rose, and that was the shade Almond Truffle from my Too Faced Bon Bons palette. This is a really beautiful shade, and I imagine I will use it a lot more in the upcoming months now that I've hit pan on Warm Rose, but they're both mid-tone crease colors, and so I couldn't really use both of them in looks. I kind 
kind of just had to choose between the two and I was focused on trying to hit pan on warm rose first because I'd been in the project longer. So now that that one's rolled out I can focus on this one and I think it'll go really nicely with the cooler tone eyeshadows that I already have in my quintet and hopefully it goes really good with the two that I'm rolling in as well. And this one I only reached for four times. I don't have any bonus pans to share with you this month. I hope to have at least one to share with you next month. I'm really close to hitting pan on Makeup Geeks Phantom which is a duochrome purpley shade. I wear it in my inner corner a lot and I really like it and as a result I'm getting really close to pan but not yet. So if we look at my pan percentage at the end of February I had 37 pans out of 273 eyeshadows. I did hit pan on two more eyeshadows but I also recently got a palette in the mail, my It's Freakin' Bats palette, which I'm really excited about. So that adds nine more eyeshadows to my total. So I've gone from 13.6% to 13.8%. I now have 39 pans out of 282 eyeshadows. So even though I did bring in a new palette, I hit enough pans that my percentage still went up even though it was only by 0.2%. I do have two more palettes that I recently ordered from ColourPop. I could not resist that Limoncello palette. I just couldn't. So I do have a large number of eyeshadows coming in over the next couple of weeks, meaning my pan percentage will likely go down. I think in order to offset the pan percentage, I'd probably have to hit pan on like five or six eyeshadows. I don't really see that happening, so likely my pan percentage will go down next month. Not a big deal. I don't have any specific goal in mind. But yeah, that's my pan percentage change for this month. Now let's get into looks. I'm really excited about the looks I created. In four out of the five looks, I am wearing Phantom from Makeup Geek on the inner corner. So I do have that listed, but I'm not going to point that out in every single look. And I have been trying to reach for my Charlotte Tilbury lip products lately. So in any of the looks I have featured, I'm either wearing the Pillow Talk lip liner, the Pillow Talk lip bath, or the lipstick in the shade Live It Up. And I do have that listed under what I'm wearing in the photo, but I'm not going to point that out again. Let's start with look number one. I wanted a simpler, lighter look. I did want to feature the blue, but I didn't want it to be taking over my entire eye look. So I used it more as an accent shade. I have that on the outer half of my lid. And then I have a warm rose in the crease. I have dark side from Urban Decay on the lower lash line. And then to lighten it up a little bit and make it less blue, I added Trance from the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette onto the lid. It's kind of like a silvery taupe shade and it went beautifully with that blue color. In look number two, I wanted to play with that green color with Morgana, so I have that all over the lid. I have Makeup Geek's Petal Pusher in the crease because it's like a cool toned purpley color. And I wanted to brighten up that green a little bit, so I actually topped Marvel from the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette on top of that green just to make it a little bit more bright without taking away from the green look. And I asked in my last update what kind of green eyeshadows people were going for in the month of March. And a lot of people said Marvel from Tarte's Make Believe in Yourself palette, which is a palette that was discontinued or was limited edition and hasn't been around for like two or three years. And people were still referencing it as one of their favorite green eyeshadows. So it inspired me to pull out mine again. And I'm really glad it pairs so well with Morgana. It's a beautiful pairing. For look number three, I wanted something cool toned. I wanted something with grays and blues. I really wanted to play up the gun metal aspect of that dark side shade from Urban Decay. So I have dark side all over the lid, packed on. I have Petal Pusher from Makeup Geek in the crease. I also have dark side on the lower lash line as well as some pencil liner to make it a little bit more smoky. And then I took Mystic from the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette, which is kind of like a grayish blue shimmer shade. And I tapped that on the center just to make it look more gunmetal. And I love how this looked. I will definitely be doing this look a lot more in the month of April. Even though it's not the most springy look, I really, really liked this. And I am really glad to be pulling out that Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette. It's been really great to have colorful shimmer shades that are really brightening to kind of lighten up the look a little bit or just pop it on the center of the lid to add more dimension. In the last two photos, I don't know what the sun was doing. I take these photos in my kitchen in front of a window. I try to use natural sunlight and I think the sun was just really bright both of these days for look four and five and so I don't really feel like I look like myself <laughs> and I think the colors are a little bit blown out. I tried to fix the lighting in the photos in editing but I don't really know how to edit photos so I did the best I could. <laughs> For this one, I really wanted to layer Peacocking and Morgana, the blue and the green. So I have Peacocking all over the lid and in the crease, and then I put Morgana on top just with my fingers 
And I think in real life you could see the mix of like the blue and the green depending on the light you were looking in, depending on the angle. Once again, I have Dark Side from Urban Decay on the lower lash line. I have Makeup Geek's Phantom on the inner corner. And I'm wearing Live It Up from Charlotte Tilbury on the lips. And the very last one, this, I don't even think I look like myself in these photos. And I think the biggest giveaway is my eye color. My eyes are not that color in real life. So I don't know what the sunlight was trying to do that day. <laughs> anyway, if you can see, it's a bit blown out. Warm Rose from Too Faced is the main color for this look. I'm wearing all over the lid, in the crease, on the lower lash line. And then as kind of a topper shade, I very lightly applied Sparkling Sand from the Too Faced Natural Nudes palette. It's a metallic version of Warm Rose just to add a little bit of dimension and then I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see in that second photo but I took that Makeup Geek Phantom shade and I put it in my inner corner and then I kind of brought it up to my brow bone and I think in real life this looked really cool and then I don't have anything on my lips I think I'm just wearing a clear lip balm so those are my five looks I would say my personal favorite was look number three with that gunmetal and blue just because that's not a color I reach for very often and it turned out so nice and it's one that I'm excited to keep doing in April Okay, so now it's time to bring in the two shadows that I'm rolling in for this month. And I already have my Pretty Random app open. I have the minimum as one and the maximum as 238. So let's look at the first one. The first number I rolled is 117. Number 117 is from Juvia's Place. It's the first time I've rolled in something from this brand in my project so far. And it's in the shade Yehida, which I believe is from the Magic Mini palette. Okay, yeah, so it's this really, really dark navy blue matte color. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. I think it'll go nicely with some of the other shades, but it's funny I'm getting so many dark colors in my quintet right now. I cannot even imagine how long it would take to hit pan on this shadow. I mean, any of these shadows from this palette. But either way, that's beautiful, and I think it'll go really well with the green and the gray that I have in my quintet already. Now let's roll in the fifth shade. My next number is 171. And what do you know, Ball and Chain is, again, from the Natural Lust palette. Okay, that's this shimmery taupey shade right here at the bottom. Yeah, that's totally doable. I am loving, loving, loving how cool-toned this color story is. I'm really excited about that. I love that I do have kind of like a silvery taupey shimmer shade. I think this will go amazingly with any of the other shades. I think I have a really good mix of deeper colors and lighter colors, mattes and shimmers. That ball and chain shade, now that I see it swatched on the back of my hand, it's beautiful. It's one of those shades where maybe your eye wouldn't be caught by it when you're looking at especially a large palette with so many other shades in it. And it's funny, so far this year, I've worked on at least one shade from this palette so far. So I think this palette's just not ready to be rolled out yet. When I think of what I could potentially roll out next month, I think if I focus on Morgana, I'll be able to roll that out and then make really good progress on Dark Side and Almond Truffle. I don't know if I'll be able to hit pan on either of them because they are very tightly pressed shades that I haven't used a lot previously. Like I said, I do have a big list of people who do this project in the description box in case you're craving more panless eyeshadows content. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!